Welcome to Wheels Up. My name is Sierra, and I'm so excited to take you on a super fun journey brought to you by the Sunrise Association, the Sunrise Studios, and our friends at American Airlines. While we're on our adventure, see if you can spot Wings, our special airplane friend who will show up in three different places. After our adventure, join us for crafts in our Sunrise VX Treehouse. And last, but certainly not least, we'll do a fun game of trivia with me, all about our adventure. Are you ready? Let's go! Fasten your seatbelts. Here to kick us off is a special representative from our friends at American Airlines. Welcome passengers. I'm American Airlines flight attendant Bianca Bennett. Welcome aboard our very special flight today with service from Sunrise Association and American Airlines to tour some of the world's most mysterious locations. Our first stop today will be Cork, Ireland. So buckle up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Hello, adventurers. We have an extra special journey in store for you. It includes ancient wonders, curious legends, and unbelievable natural sights all over the world. This is the Wheels Up Magical Mystery Tour. So buckle your seat belts and prepare for landing as our American Airlines flight touches down in Cork, Ireland. Here we go. Our Magical Mystery Tour begins about five miles northwest of Cork, Ireland at one of the country's oldest and most historic castles, Blarney Castle. Every day, Hundreds of tourists climb the 128 steps to the top of the castle to do something a little bit unusual. Kiss a piece of stone. The block of limestone, known as Blarney Stone, was set in a tower of the castle in 1446. But why would anyone want to kiss it? Well, according to legend, fun fact number one, people who kiss the Blarney Stone are given speech superpowers. That one tiny smooch results in sweet and convincing speech, or what the Irish call the gift of gab. That's why the word blarney today means charming or flattering talk. No way! More than 450,000 people visit Blarney Castle every year, and many of those visitors go to great lengths to kiss the Blarney Stone. Let's meet Blarney Castle's marketing manager, Paul O'Sullivan, to find out more about why so many people do this. Hello, welcome to Blarney Castle and Gardens. My name is Paul O'Sullivan and I am the marketing manager here. And I'm here to tell you why you should kiss the famous Blarney Stone, which is located at the very top of the castle behind me. The story of why you should kiss it, well, this dates back over 600 years, back to the, when the Lord of the castle at the time had a slight speech impediment. And he was walking around our lake one night and he heard these awful screams. So he looked in and he saw a woman drowning. So he jumped in and saved her. And she was the friendly witch that lived in our gardens. And as a thank you for saving her life, the witch said to the Lord that if he kissed the stone at the very top of the castle, it would get rid of his speech impediment. So that's where the gift of eloquence or the gift of good speech comes from. Or as we say nowadays, if you kiss it, you can talk yourself out of any situation. And believe it or not, I've been working here over 15 years and I've probably kissed it over 100 times. It is a great thing to do. It's a lot of fun, but just be careful. It is 100 feet in the air. So if you're a little scared of heights, it can be a little difficult, but it will give you the famous Blarney gift of the gab. Thank you so much and hope you have a great day. Wow. Very convincing. Are you curious about how people kiss a stone 100 feet in the air? <laughs> I am. Let's watch Paul's demonstration to see how it's done. Before we start, my colleague Cullum is going to clean the Blarney stone, which is something we have done for many, many years. And then I will give you the step-by-step -step guide of how to kiss the famous Blarney stone. Step one. So remove any hats and glasses or any valuables that might be in your pockets, such as phones. They don't tend to survive 100 foot drops. Step two is to lie down on your back. The reason you lie down on your back is so that you're looking up at the sky and not the 100 foot drop below. 
Also, it's not possible to kiss the stone on your front. Step three is to grab the two bars behind you. So step four, my colleague is gonna hold you by the waist and you slowly bring yourself into the wall and kiss the last six inches. That is where the Blarney Stone is located. Step five, bring yourself up slowly and most importantly, don't rush. Go forth with the gift of eloquence and make sure you use it wisely. Would you like to do that? That's a lot of work. What do you think? Is it worth it? Does the stone have magical powers? It's time to move on to some other magical and mysterious stones, but we won't be kissing them. Our next American Airlines flight is taking us east to the country of England. Located on the Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England, Stonehenge has been a great mystery to historians and archaeologists for hundreds of years. This is not just any mysterious monument. Fun fact number two, Stonehenge is one of the world's most famous prehistoric monuments. If you can believe this, no one knows for sure how and why the huge circle of giant upright stones came to be. There are many ideas, including one that giants and a wizard named Merlin used magic to create it because when work on the monument began around 5,000 years ago there weren't modern machines and tools around to haul those heavy stones. It remains a mystery as to how people were able to move and arrange the stones thousands of years ago. Ooh. And boy are those stones heavy. The larger stones at the center are called sarsens, and the smaller ones are blue stones. The sarsen stones weigh about 25 tons each. That's around as heavy as four African elephants. Wow! Hmm, how did the stones get there? Experts think the stones could have been moved over water to reach the site, perhaps pushed by glaciers. Could some of the smaller stones have been dragged across the land on large wooden sleds? Or could it really have been the work of giants and Merlin's magic? Hmm. Give that some thought as we hop on our American Airlines flight to our last mysterious location on this tour that's in Europe. Poland, here we come. Oh, spooky. We are now in the middle of the eerie, crooked forest which is near the town of Grafino in northwestern Poland. These pine trees look a little bit unusual, don't they? Do you see the curbs at the bases of the trees? That's wild! The 400 trees in the crooked forest were planted around 1930. The trees are pretty much healthy, growing to around 50 feet tall. But why are they so oddly shaped is a big mystery. There are different theories about why the trees grew crookedly, but no one knows for sure what happened. Here's why. The most accepted idea is that farmers planted and grew the trees like this on purpose. Hmm, why and how? We may never know because for many years, no one lived in the town. The town was abandoned and the people who had lived there then would have been the ones who could have answered the questions about the crooked trees. The crooked forest remains a magical mystery. Unbelievable! Our next unbelievable site is on an island country called Mauritius, off the southeastern coast of Africa. Get ready to feast your eyes on something totally magical! Have you ever made sand art? That sand is dyed, but this sand is natural and, well, kind of magical. I see red, brown, violet, green, blue, purple, yellow. Fun fact number three, there are seven colors in these sand dunes. No wonder why this magical looking site on Mauritius is called the Seven Colored Earths. The colorful sand is said to have formed because of volcanic activity. Hot volcanic rock cooled down at different temperatures and formed different colors. But there are some mysteries, like how the colored sand settles in layered stripes and doesn't mix together even after weather and climate change. And even with the heavy rainfall there, the psychedelic sand doesn't ever seem to erode or wash away. That is so cool. 
there are mysteriously magical looking sites all over the world. Let's go to Asia to see one there. Twinkle, twinkle, not so little stars. Here we are at the Sea of Stars in the Maldives. Fun fact number four, the Maldives is made up of about 1,200 islands. And off the coast of one of them, Badu Island, is thought to be the best place to see this stunning sea of stars. A chemical reaction causes tiny ocean life to give off this bluish light. The reaction happens when the ocean life is disturbed by something like waves crashing onto the shore, a person stepping on the wet sand, or even a paddle hitting the water. Look what happens when you touch the water. It almost looks like magic shooting out of your fingers. You can even swim in the glowing water. To add to the mystery, the magical glow happens at only certain times of the year. Some say June and October are the best times to spot it, but exactly when and even where to see it is hard to predict. How about a sea of pink? Let's head to Australia to see that. Do you see what looks like a giant pool of melted pink bubblegum? That's the magical and mysterious Lake Hillier in Western Australia. Up until very recently, why the lake is bubblegum pink was a mystery to scientists. Recent research suggests its color comes from a mix of red and purple bacteria and algae. The mystery of the pink color may have been solved, but it is still so magical to see. Just look at that beautiful water. Would you like to swim in this lake? I bet swimming in a pink lake would be practically perfect for Pinkalicious. And guess what? Fun fact number five, Lake Hillier is not the world's only pink lake, but it may be the world's most famous pink lake. There are others in Israel, Spain, Canada, Bolivia, <gasps> Bolivia. That's a country in South America. Let's head there now. Welcome to Easter Island. This island is found in South America and is owned by the country of Chile. Wow, there's nothing around us here for thousands of miles. And I don't see any Easter baskets, just lots of these enormous carved stone statues. Easter Island is famous for them. These statues are called Moai and were carved hundreds of years ago by the Rapa Nui people. By the way, locals call the island Rapa Nui too. It's known as Easter Island because it was on Easter in 1722 that the first European explorer saw it. I had no idea! These gigantic statues are one of the world's greatest mysteries. Nobody knows just how the early islanders moved these giant statues. They're all different sizes, but on average, they're around 13 feet and weigh almost 30,000 pounds. That's about the same weight as two T-Rex dinosaurs. Legend says that the statues magically walked to their places around the island. Scientists have demonstrated how the islanders could have pulled the statues in a way that made it look as if the statues were walking. But, hmm, what do you think? Is it just a magical mystery? For the fun of this tour, I'm going with magical mystery. There are so many magical and mysterious places around the world, I wish we could explore them all. But it's time to hop on our American Airlines flight and head home for crafts in the Sunrise BX Treehouse to make some of our own magical and mysterious creations. Can't wait! Wow, that was such an incredible adventure! Did you have a chance to see wings? Here are the three different times where we spot wings. We have another adventure where we're gonna go crafting in our Sunrise VX treehouse. Let's go! Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. In today's video, we saw magical and mysterious places all around the world. And so today, we're going to make a Stonehenge craft and a seven colored earth craft. I hope you have fun! Here are the craft supplies that you'll need. Project one, Stonehenge. Construction paper, one piece black and one any color. Scissors, paint sticks, markers or crayons, glue. Project two, seven colored earths. Construction paper, one white, 
watercolor paints, crayons. First, we are going to make a Stonehenge craft. So I have some yellow paper, which is gonna be my background. And so I'm gonna make like a sunset in the background. And then I'm using some black paper for the actual stones. So if you wanna make a sunset, you can also use yellow paper, but you can also use white paper and color it, or you can use blue paper to make it look like the sky, but this is what I'm gonna use. So first, I'm going to make it look like a sunset. So I'm gonna use some paint sticks, and I'm going to use some orange, and some pink, and some yellow to make it look like the sky. So I'm just gonna draw some shapes like this. And use all different colors. I'm using paint sticks to do my background, but if you don't have them, you can also use paint or watercolor or markers to make your sunset. And I'm gonna make my sunset a lot of different colors because when you look in the sky at the sunset, it's always a lot of different colors, not just one color. So I'm using yellow and pink and red and orange to make it look really fun and colorful. Okay, so now that I have my sunset, I'm gonna cut out some of the stones. So I'm gonna fold my paper in half and I'm going to cut out a shape that looks like a stone. So I'm kind of just gonna make it like this and I'm gonna cut upwards and I'm kind of just moving my scissor around so that it's not a perfect straight line because they're not perfectly straight they kind of have like curves in them so I'm kind of just doing it like that and you can make a few different shapes and sizes so I'm gonna make some taller and some shorter and some thinner all different ones, just like this. So now that I have a few different stones, I'm gonna glue them on to the paper. So first, I'm gonna take one of the taller ones and place it over here. And I'm just doing mine how I think it might look, but if you wanna make it how it really looks, you can look up a picture of it and maybe you can make what you think would like the more like the real shapes, but I'm just gonna make mine like this. And I'm just gonna cut out one more long strip to put right here. And Stonehenge was made a really, really long time ago by people, and it's a mystery how they did it because they didn't have machines like we do today, so I think it would be really hard to do that without all of the machines, so I don't know how they did it, but it's pretty cool. So just like this. So this is what mine looks like when it's all finished, so I made a sunset with some of the stones, but you can also make a sky with grass or however else you want to make the background. The second craft we are going to do is about the seven colored earth. So I have some white paper and some watercolor and also some crayons. And I'm gonna start by drawing the background, which is all trees. And I'm making sure to use my crayons first because when you go over it with the watercolor, it's like resist art. So it'll, it won't go over the crayons, it'll kind of like resist it. So make sure to use the crayons first. And I'm going to draw some green in the background and then some trees on top. I'm also gonna do some darker green on top so that it's different colors. 
And then I'm also going to leave some space so that I'm going to draw the sky too, color it with watercolor. And if you color all of it, you're not going to be able to see the sky. So I'm just going to leave some parts white, just like this. And then I'm going to draw some trees. So I'm just going to draw some trunks like this. So I'm just drawing some of the green for the trees, for like the leaves. So you can make some trees bigger, some smaller. You can add some little branches on some of the trees if you want. Okay, so now that I'm done with the trees, I'm gonna do the sand, which is the really cool and mysterious part. So this sand has seven different colors, so I'm gonna pick seven different colors to use, and I'm just gonna draw some like waves like this, and just go all across the paper. So now I'm just gonna use some orange too. And this is really cool because it has a lot of different colors. And you can see this in Mauritius, which is um, off of the coast of Africa. So people go to see it and it's really, really cool. When I watercolor paint, I like to blend the colors together. So if you just take some water and kind of put it along the edge, it kind of blends it together. And then sometimes you need to use more water or less water to make it blend more. And it's really fun to see all the colors blend together. Okay, so now I'm done with all of the different colors. Now I'm going to add the sky up here. So I'm going to take some blue watercolor and add it in. And it's okay if you go over your crayon from before because it will resist it. If you see here, I'm going over my trees that I drew before, but if you use enough water, you'll still be able to see them, which is really cool. So you can kind of go over your trees just a little bit so you can still, so it looks like there in front of the sky. You might need to use a little bit more water to make sure that it's not covering them too much. So I'm just going in between the trees and above them a little bit so that it looks like the sky. So now this is what mine looks like when it's all finished. And if you want, you can even find like the real colors that are in the seven colored earths and then you can use those in your painting. But I just use these colors and this is what mine looks like when it's all finished. I hope you had fun making these magical and mysterious crafts with me. I'll see you next time, bye. Wow, we had such a blast crafting with you today. Well, get ready, because we're coming in for our final destination, an exciting trivia game, where you'll get to have more fun with trivia questions about our adventure today. I'm gonna ask you 10 questions. Each question has four answers, but only one answer is correct. Can you figure it out? Well, come on, let's play. Welcome to Wheels Up Trivia with Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. Question one. 
we visited places on this adventure that are A. Ancient B. Mysterious C. Magical or D. All of the above. You guessed it. Oh, and what a cool adventure this was. Question two. Blarney Castle is in A. Ireland B. England C. Storybooks only or D. Disney World. Blarney Castle is real and it exists in Ireland. Question three. Legend says that people who kiss the Blarney Stone will A. Meet Peppa Pig B. Have sweet and convincing speech C. Become fast runners or D. Become wealthy It would be so cool to meet Peppa Pig, but the gift of gab is the correct answer. Question four. Stonehenge is a circle of giant A. Toothbrushes B. Stones C. Dogs or D. Elephants. The hint is in the name. Stones for Stonehenge. Question five. The Stonehenge stones are A. Light B. Fake C. Heavy or D. Tiny Remember we learned that some of them weigh as much as four elephants? Question six. The seven colored earths has layers of colorful A. Cake B. Jello C. Crayons or D. Sand oh, And the sand is so beautiful! Question seven. What causes the sea of stars to glow? A. Tiny ocean life B. Tons of LED lights C. Batteries or D. None of the above Don't you love how it's all those little critters making all of that beautiful bioluminescence? Question 8. Lake Hillier is A in Western Australia, B, pink, C, not the world's only pink lake, or D, all of the above. So cool that it's pink and it's not the only one. Question nine, Easter Island is, A, also known as Rapa Nui B. In North America C. A type of folk dance or D. Famous for having egg hunts <laughs> That last one is funny, but great job! Also known as Rapa Nui And our final question, number 10 The statues on Easter Island are called a. Moai B. Henges C. Blarney or D. Continents Great job! Wow, what a fun game of trivia! Thanks so much for playing with me! We'll see you next time! Wow, you did such an awesome job with trivia today. 
thanks for joining me on this episode of Wheels Up. Did you know that there are more adventures of Wheels Up available for you? Oh yeah! Just head to our YouTube channel or you can download our Sunrise Studios app, which is available on iOS or Android, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And thank you so much to the Sunrise Studios, Sunrise Association, and the wonderful American Airlines. We'll see you next time.